My name is Lisa Shea, and today we're going to do a crayon resist watercolor painting. Crayon resist is when you use a crayon, often a white crayon, to draw the initial design. And when you're drawing with crayon, you're creating a barrier between the watercolor and the paper. So wherever you draw the crayon, the water can't get through, and it creates these natural markations between the different sections of your watercolor. And I like that effect very much, it's sort of like a stained glass effect. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw this lobster in pencil first. We're going to trace the pencil design with the crayon to create these resist areas. And then we're going to paint it with watercolor paints. So in order to do this, you need watercolor paper or some kind of paper that you can paint on with watercolors. You need watercolors. You don't need all these colors. You can just use whatever colors you want. You need crayon. White works well, but any color is fine. A pencil and eraser for the drawing and then some brushes and water to paint the watercolor with. So let us get started. Put the lobster over there for now. All right, so first we're going to take our pencil and we're going to draw the lobster. The lobster is really just a cylinder shape with some little wiggly things on the side. So we'll start with the center. The head is a little narrower at the top. And then it comes out in a trapezoid for this top piece. And then you have a series of slowly narrowing segments. And it doesn't really matter how thick or thin you make these. It is up to you. This is your lobster. So we'll go like this. Make it a little narrower at the bottom, and then we're going to spread out into a tail, like that, and give it sort of a swoop at the bottom, give it its little fins, and then create the segments. So again, feel free to do this however you want. All right, we're not going to draw the arms in. We'll just do those free form. But then out of this top head segment, we're going to draw the claws. So we have a thicker piece of claw, or the claw arm, I suppose, a thinner piece, and then the actual claw itself. Like that, the little pinchy part up there. And then the connector piece. Alright, and then we'll do the other claw. The claw arm. Claw arm two. And then the claw piece. got a lobster ship. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a white crayon, just regular old white crayon, and we're going to trace all of these lines. So the space that we're tracing is going to resist watercolor from reaching the paper. So it's fine to make these nice and fat so that there's a clear boundary between each of these segments. It's a good way it's do, doing these designs that have big spaces because if you're using a big fat crayon, you want to be able to have big spaces in there for the watercolor to then fill in. So this would be less ideal for doing little tiny designs unless you had tiny little crayons to work with. Most of us have these big, large crayons, which are, work well with big spaces. Alright, so all I'm doing is tracing all of the sections of this lobster. And do the other part. Go this way. Around. 
And it's sort of hard to see what you have drawn and what you haven't drawn, but if you hold it up and tilt it under a light, you should be able to see what sections are a little shiny, which is the white crayon on there. And I think I've gotten all of the different sections with the white crayon. All right, so we'll put lobster aside for now. Now we'll put it over there. Now it is time for the watercolor process. So we can take up our brush, get the brush wet, and then whatever color you want to paint. So we're going to do red. And paint in this section. Now what's nice is that the edges will naturally fall into place because that white crayon is blocking the paint from going there. So I'll paint in some more. If you go a little outside, you can just lift it up with paper towel or your finger. It's the beauty of watercolors. Go section by section. It's good to have each section be a little lighter or a little darker than the other sections because it gives it a bit of variation. It gives it some visual interest. And in nature, a few things are all exactly the same color from top to bottom, so by doing that, you make it look more natural. So I'm painting mine red which is the color of a lobster after it's cooked. But you can paint your lobster any color you want. Don't need to worry about what you think a lobster should look like. This is your own personal lobster, and it can be any way that you want it to be. But see how, like if I try to paint higher here, it just fades away because it's on the crayon, and the crayon is resisting the watercolor paint. So this is a very fun technique to use. You can see how some sections are lighter and some sections are darker, and I'm doing that on purpose to give these a little variation to each other. So that's the last little body section there. Now we'll start on the tail. Just go again, the same thing, section by section. Sometimes I add a little more paint, sometimes I add a little more water to try to get these sections to each have their own color density. There we go. Make this one a little lighter. I like painting sea life. It seems very serene and peaceful to me. Imagine them being safe down in the bottom of the ocean, able to do whatever they want to do. can live a very long time. They're impressive little creatures. All right, now I'm painting in the little scalloped areas of the bottom tail. I'll maybe get a little more color. One of the beauties of watercolors is that you can add layers to them. Watercolors are a type of paint that you can see through. You can see through to the paper, so this is lighter because you can see more through to the white paper. And that's darker because there's more pigment there that's blocking you from seeing the paper. So you can build up your watercolors in layers where you put on one color first and then you add a little of a different color. And you can actually erase watercolors if you need to by carefully painting with water and the water will lift up the color. So you have a lot of flexibility here. Let's make this a little darker over here. Alright, and see how we're getting those segment effects because of the crayon blocking the paint from getting down to the paper? Alright, we've got the claw here. Part. All 
Right, so we got most of the basic lobster filled in now. But lobsters are three-dimensional creatures. So part of what you want to think about, if you want to add a little more dimension to it, is where the light is and where the shadow is. So I'm going to put the light over here in my imagination, which would mean that it was shining this way, which meant that this side over here is going to be a little darker because it's going to be in the shadow more. So all we're going to do is add a little bit more color to this side over here, which we'll call the shadow side. That helps it give a little more of a 3D effect. As if the light is shining on this lobster and creating shadows down that side. So we need this side over here of the little segments of the tail. And you don't have to do this if you don't want to. If you'd like the ladder look of the lobster, then that is fine. A more cartoony look, we might say. And this is already sort of an abstracted view of our lobster, because we're using the segments and everything so clearly. That's up to you, how realistic or how abstracted you want to make it. So I'm just adding a bit of a darker color to all of this side of the lobster. Help you with that sense that the light's coming from the other side. Add a little darkness in there. And the other thing we can do, if we want to, is add a little bit of texture. And again, this is wholly up to you, but if you want to, you put in some little dots to give a sense that the lobster has this kind of speckled texture. Some lobsters do. If you like that for your lobster, you could do that. If you don't, then you don't have to. This is wholly up to you. I'm just giving you ideas. And I think I'll make it too body torso bits that have a little bit of texture. Yeah. So you can do that. You cannot do that. It is what you want. Uh, maybe give a little to the tail. So this is what happens. You start <laughs> playing with it and saying, well, what, what, what if I do that? What if I do that? At some point, you have to call it done. All right. So now I'm going to draw some legs onto it. The legs come out of the second piece. So this piece here is his head piece, and then this here is his um, the bottom half of his main torso piece. So we'll just get some red paint. Make sure it's not too watery so it doesn't go too wild on me. And I'm just going to draw some little leg parts. We'll just draw them in threes. Connect them a little butcher. I like them very disconnected, but then some people say they look a little too much like skeletons that way, so I will respect what they're saying and keep their pieces a little more connected to each other. Four legs on each side. So now he's got some legs, or she, although I think only males have claws. See, yeah, I should know this. You would think they'd all need claws. All right, we'll give him some little top antennas. And then he's got two long antennas. So we'll start out and give him a swoop. 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 All right, so 
No, he's got his antennas. He's got his claws. He's got a little variation between lights and darks. He's got a little bit of shadow on this side. We'll just give a little more shadow. Help that stand out a little more. And then the last piece is to give him eyeballs. Now when watercolor is wet, if you then add more color to it, the color will spread in the wet areas. Let's see if one of these areas is wet, she'll show you. Yeah, see so how see how that spread out like a bloom? So if the head area is still wet and we try to add in the black for the eyeballs, it's gonna spread out all by itself. That is dry, but that area that I just painted there is still a little wet, so I can paint the eyes if I don't get too close into the shadow piece. We'll give it a shot <laughs> and see what happens. Here I suppose I can give it a little bit more drying time by adding some more shadow down onto this arm area. Adding some extra shadow into this claw area. And along the edge of the picture. Anything else that needs extra shadow? No, I think most things are pretty pretty shaded the way I would like it. All right, we're going to give an attempt on the eyeballs so you guys don't have to wait too long. So for the eyeballs, I'm going to do black, which is up here. All right, sorry about that. My webcam disconnected on me. So we're now painting the eyeballs on the lobster. So we're going to make two eyes right here. And hopefully this is dry, so this does not spread. Seems to be dry. This is the dangerous one because it's getting towards the part I was just working on, which could still be wet, but I think that I have done it. Right, they're a tiny bit offset because I was trying to avoid that left hand side, but you get the sense of it. You want to wait till the head is all dry before you put the black eyeballs on, otherwise the black eyeball paint will spread out in the area that was already wet from before. So make sure you let the head dry <laughs> before you add the eyeball paint. But you can see when I painted it that that area underneath the eyeballs was dredged so that the eyeball paint stayed right where it needed to be. Alright, so here you have a red lobster made with watercolor with crayon wax resist to keep the segments separate. Ask me if you have any questions. Happy to paint other shapes for you and have a wonderful week.